Welcome to the Off Hours Pod with Beck and Kev. Hello, everyone. We have a special guest today. It is the one, the only, Zachary Cook. Zachary. Hello. This is the big applause. Goodness. It is so good to finally be here. Oh, finally, yes. It's it's been too long. Too long, mm-hmm. Zach. It's been too long. I miss We've been you. doing this for a whole month, and we haven't gotten Zach yet. And now Zach is here. It's very exciting. This is very exciting This is a wonderful us. day. I'm this very excited. Beautiful. Zachary, um, you are an inspiration. Um, I don't know if anybody really knows this who listens to this podcast. Um, welcome. But Zachary, quite literally is the inspiration for our company's name that's true yeah Ooh. completely okay let's give let's do a quick name origin story here's a fun fact origin story so zachary cook loves blue hour and if you don't Mm -hmm. know what blue hour is blue hour is like this magical bit of the day it happens twice, I guess. Um, first in the morning and then in the evening. But it's like right before um, the sun starts to peek out. But there's like this beautiful navy hue in the sky. And it creates this wonderful lighting. And it only lasts for like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Not even half the time. And- <laughs> Sometimes you don't even get it. Right. And Zachary Cook, being the passionate filmmaker he is, decides that this is the best time to film most scenes. Point blank period. In, in the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so one night I couldn't sleep while we were working on a film set and we were trying to come up with a name for our company. And then it came to me because Kev had been talking about how the film Welcome Back to Reading, which will be filming again so soon. Our first feature length film, woo, woo, written yes. by Zachary Cook. Um, is, the heart and soul. It takes a lot of, it's it's a lot of blue hour scenes. And I remember Kev being like, oh, this is going to be tough to schedule. And then so I had been thinking about Reading and schedules. And then I was like, wait, like 3 a.m., you know? And you have these epiphany moments. These moments, like, they come to you. Blue hour. And that's how we got our name. Blue Hour Studios. Studios. Um, oh my God, so I Zach just Cook is the job. inspiration. Good job, Zach Kev. Cook is the inspiration. And I think it's just so fitting because all of the projects that like we work on, Zach is there. Zach is a part of. Zach is like the we're big fans. orbit. And we're, yeah, we're very, very big fans. So we needed something to remind us of him when we don't see him every day, which is so sad. Right. And oh, we thank cry. you. Um, so <laughs> let's start with um, our segment of what was our favorite thing we watched this week? Who wants to go first? Oh God, can I go first this time? I mean, I oh, always Kevin, go last. Please I take mean, it away. Um, so I watched one episode, mind you. So I need to continue this because it is quite incredible. But has anybody here seen Jury Duty? No, I have not. It has just it just came out in uh literally this year and it's eleven jurors and like one actor. So it's like Wait. or no, the eleven actors or one juror. That is right flip flip back because I'm an idiot. But like <laughs> it basically So one, one person, person there, who doesn't know. They don't know what's going on at all. And everybody oh. else, the actors, the court, the defendant, the judges, the the plaintiffs, every single person inside of the courtroom knows except for them and it's like doing like skit and like scenes and like there's so oh. many funny scenarios that go on literally one of their jurors is just like constantly falling asleep and then the judge is like you need to keep her awake if she falls Me. asleep this is on you and then like, oh my gosh and then so he's like worried about like her falling asleep and she's like well i'm just looking at my blouse <laughs> 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 so where is this on it's on like amazon or freebie or whatever the freak it's called to be to no freebie freebie or freebie, freebie. oh freebie okay freebie freebie yeah <laughs> yeah okay so jerry duty that sounds so interesting it's so funny it's it feels like it's the office meets yeah. like 
I don't even know, but like really funny, really funny. The Office Meets Community. Oh, okay. Huh. Really good. I'm right. obsessed. Love that. So that was my show. Thank you, Zachary. Well, <laughs> that sounds like you're thanking me. What? Like I'm picking names? Well, I only have two options. <laughs> Um, the, my favorite thing that I watched this week was a little movie called The Northman by Robert Eggers. Oh. Robert Eggers. Robert Eggers, I think. Yeah. Is that who it's, did um, 1916? No, he's the guy that did The Witch and The Lighthouse, uh, which are both horror movies. Yes, I did know that. And so The Northman is like, his first sort of like bigger budget more hollywood like very big almost action type movie um about vikings oh come on vikings my dad would love this um it's i wasn't sure what to expect going into it because i was like oh like it's it seems like something that wouldn't really be up like his alley like it's very different from the other stuff he's done but it still maintains that sort of level of horror and like kind of yeah. like creepy atmosphere. It's it's still somehow very distinctly a Robert Eggers movie, and I loved it. It's basically Hamlet, but with Vikings, and Ooh. it just it's very good. It's not what I expected. I highly recommend. Do you know that feels mm. right though? Because Hamlet takes place in Scotland, so it feels like it should have been Vikings from the beginning. <laughs> 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 you know. You're like, like maybe it just makes it, sense. It, yeah, maybe it would be done better if it was just Vikings all the time. Mm. That's yeah, it's, it's, it's the case. <laughs> I'm I can't, here for this. Oh, and Bjork is in it. Bjork is in it for a little bit. Bjork, Bjork, the singer. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. She, has a, she has a little cameo. It's really cool. My freshman year crush in college would be quaking right now. (laughs) Oh, and okay. So (laughs) to tie, to tie the Northman to something that we've done. um, Mm. I liked the movie so much. I watched it a second time with the director's commentary. Right. (gasps) I love the director's commentary. Um, And it was just do that for Reading anyways. Sorry. Go back. So (laughs) to relate it to Reading actually. So the with reading we had we ran into a lot of issues with re- weather sometimes you know yeah um apparently because they filmed the northman during covid and it was supposed to happen in sweden so, oh iceland it was supposed to happen in iceland Damn. right because of the very distinct landscape and vikings and all that but because yeah. there was like they filmed it during covid and there was like restrictions on travel and stuff they couldn't film it there so they had to film it in Ireland instead, which is a very different landscape. Yes. And also the time they went to Ireland to film, it was like the sunniest Ireland had ever been in like history <laughs> for a really long time or something, which is almost exactly what happened to us with Reading. And I was like, yeah, it was like, give so- us the clouds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and my they still made it work. Gosh. Wow. No, it's so true because like those struggles were so real. And I was like, no, this is something that would happen anywhere. Like, and that's yeah. just what, oh my gosh. But it made me so mad. I was like, are you kidding me? We play, we were like, it'll be January. At least the like weather will be perfect for the lighting and it'll be what we right. want. Like, it's going to suck that we, because we were pl- originally, fun fact, everybody, for the um production, the original production was scheduled for running in um the fall semester of twenty twenty two. Yes. Yeah. And like so it's supposed to be like October to December. And we didn't yeah. end up shooting it until January. And we are still in production and it is almost May. Mm-hmm. That's true. So yeah, but I do remember I've never seen so many people get a- uh, angry at the sun. Yeah, um, and just yell at the sun. Oh, Scream. I was furious. I was like, furious. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. It Zach, was quite you were. You kept your cool. You you impressed me. Some days you were like, "No, I need this sun to disappear." But the other days, I was. I felt like more mad about the sun than you. And I knew you. Well, were that's fuming. because think about who you people are. I'm the drama bit. Right, oh. <laughs> Zach's a yeah. little bit Ding. more subdued than you. 
I'm really glad that people couldn't tell that I was freaking out and extremely upset. You hold it no, together a lot better you than most of us. I'm so glad. <laughs> um, I was like, what? Yeah. So where where can you what where where can you watch Northman? I watched it on DVD. I borrowed it from my dad, but oh. um, I'm pretty sure that you can watch it on Amazon. Oh, okay. Come Period. on, Amazon. Yeah. Two for two. But, like, also, come on DVD. Like, let's well, yeah. just take it back real quick. Let's talk Zach a second. Zach just, like, whipping out the C- CD. Not the yeah, CD. Yeah, that's, that's how I listen to the director's commentary. But oh. if you want to listen to the director's commentary but don't want to get the DVD, Is it you on can, YouTube? if you look hard enough, you can find it on YouTube. There's no Period. video with it. So you'd have to play the commentary while you're watching and the you movie. You can just put the movie on and the commentary. Yeah, yeah, I you can that. do that. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's beautiful. I love a good commentary. I oh, could you imagine an Otto's commentary? I it oh, made me think I, about that. Than the movie. I really want to do an Otto's commentary. That would be a good one. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Okay. It'd so what crazy. about you? What did you? What did you watch? Okay, so I'm I'm switching it up. Um, I'm talking about a documentary series I've been watching. Oh, yes, I know. The documentary. I there. do love my documentaries. I haven't talked about mm. them enough. Um, we but they talked about that enough. I know. I love documentaries. Let's go back. I'm a documentary fiend. Um, this one, this series is actually, uh, it's called Diagnosis. And it's inspired by a New York Times uh, column um, that this doctor, oh, psh, 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 Oh, I don't remember her name. Oh, no. Um, Get it. Harry Anders. That feels right. Anders. Dr. Anders, I think. Um, Anyway, so she she writes this column for the New York Times about people who have really rare um, diagnoses um, Mm -hmm. and their path to like figuring out why they are experiencing the symptoms they're experiencing. But when she was approached to do it as a show. They actually found people that hadn't been diagnosed and followed them on their journey to hopefully get a diagnosis. And so she writes uh, in the column about them and then asks for people to respond with their thoughts, what they think it could possibly be. And then it hopefully opens up a lot more options for these people. Um, which I was just very interested by this. I've looked at it a few times, but this was the first mm-hmm. time this past week that I like actually sat down and watched it because I suffer from so many chronic conditions and so many like, this is what we'll say and we'll give mm-hmm. you drugs to try and deal with your symptoms, but like, we don't really know. Um, so it was something that always interested me, but so I actually sat down and watched it and it is super cool. Um, Heck yeah. I love yeah, it. What so was that's it on Netflix. Again? Diagnosis. Diagnosis. It's like a seven episode. Every episode follows a different story. Oh, period. Mm. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch that. Okay, we had three very different. I love the vibes. The vibes. I love that. This felt. We felt the most prepared for that one this time. I feel like. Go us. Yeah. Go us. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> Something I want to discuss with Zach, um, because Zach has, I feel like, been instrumental in my film journey, um, is mentorship in film, because um, I think it's something that's really cool. I think we've all experienced being mentored and also mentoring people, because Mm -hmm. you kind of, I feel like film is interesting in the way that, like, you go on one set, and the next set that you're on, somebody's probably going to be new to film and then you have to start mentoring them like immediately. Um, but you're also constantly learning. So I was wondering, Zach, if you had any fun little mentorship stories or just tidbits that you could give to the people. Sure. Um, I actually don't think I'm that good of a teacher. You are. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you guys feel that you have learned something from just being around me. Um, yes. It's, it's funny because I feel like when we were in school together, I did not a great job of uh, sort of like teaching other people in school in the classes we were in about some of the things that we need to be doing. Mm-hmm. But another thing that's interesting is I think back to the first movie I worked on with Kev 
yeah, I don't know if we can say here or not. Um, I we, don't know if it matters. We don't need to say it, but we're going to have somebody on it, on the podcast that was in the movie, and they'll probably mention oh, it. Oh, that's so fun. I'm so, <laughs> so excited to listen to that. <laughs> um, but it's, it's interesting because, Kev, I learned so much from doing that movie. Yeah. That it's interesting to think that same you and I were in the same place learning the same stuff, but I think we were learning different things. Oh my God. Like we took our... completely different stuff out of it, but we, yeah. it was, it was the same, but different. We both, I, I think going, thinking back on it, we were both going from like, I was in 1901 for the semester prior to that, but I was not doing much in 1901. And, um, And Zach, you were in it for the past two semesters. I think we both took from that go to being like, okay, this is what a leader is. And this is what a leader should do. And we wanted to be leaders. We were also going into, I think, our junior or like senior years or whatever at that point. Senior, I think it was was my senior year. Your senior, it was like my weird, I had an extra semester. It was a year and a half. But like we were both going into leadership positions or at least wanting to. I knew for certain that like I wanted to become an AD and produce and do all that stuff. And then I did, which was exciting. But you were also already top of the top of the leader. So I think like that's where it was is we both kind of took what it means to be a leader from that and then had to continue to learn and to define that as we went through that year. Yeah, I think premiere. it's funny. I think it's funny you say that because you you say like you already saw me as sort of like in that leadership position as we were doing that that movie together, but I definitely didn't feel that. I was yeah. like, I still I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the confidence to sort of like step up and doing that movie with you is what gave me the confidence to step up and kind of like take charge and start doing more and more ambitious things. Of, for like my last year in school. And I think that I'm really glad that that happened. It was a very invaluable experience. I, I tell anybody to just try to get out and do as much as you can, because genuinely, mm-hmm. even that experience, whatever it was for everybody else involved, it was something that taught me so much about myself and so much about the film industry and the indie film industry, which is completely different than studio driven work. And I mean, I made connections on that film that would like last me a lifetime, whether or not like Zach, I associate that film with you and our friendship. But I think it was like a connector for our like friendship to grow. And it's like, we met prior, but like that I think was the start of a really great work in friendship yeah for sure I agree and so like about mentoring like it's it's crazy because it was only like a few months before we did that movie together that I even got my hands on my first like big 4k camera Mm-hmm. Like you just crazy. got that black magic then when we when we started shooting loss of self, I hadn't even had a black magic for a year yet. Yeah, I remember you, know? you saying that. So, I just like assumed how did you shoot? No, how did you shoot devotion? Wait a minute. Devotion was on the black magic. That was in May. That was in May of that year. Oh, so that was like when you just like, got it. Yeah, that was like two, three months before we did that movie together in August wow that's insane you've just been making art like in, like it, it really goes to show you that it wasn't about the technology you had and mm-hmm. it was like like it you was how you used it and I think that's what I've learned so much about things from you is there's so much an art to what you do and you know it like you have it down to a t to a science because it's like the way your brain works is seeing something and Visually. creating it on a camera like that's yeah. just I've never met somebody who had that skill as much as you do it, it's just like it's so natural to you it's awesome I love and that's watching you something work. I I wanted to t- to 
branch off of too because it's it's interesting that you say like uh that Zach that you say like I don't think I'm that good of a teacher or like uh, like you felt like you could have done better I think the the cool thing about film especially is that the best way to teach is by doing and Mm. um like the reason that Kevin and I have learned so much is because we're watching and we're listening and like you don't necessarily have to be there saying hey like I'm gonna do this and then that like you do it and then we see you do we see you put a light and bounce it off of the ceiling we see you put gels on it to change it like we see you put someone outside so they can shine a light through the window. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, some of my favorite moments on set with you guys is when I have an idea and I'm like, oh, I got to do this fast. Like we're running out of time to do something and something's not going right. And I'm like, I'm like, but what if, okay, what about this? And then I just go That's and I run favorite. off and I, I change something and then someone's staring at the monitor and they go, oh my God. <laughs> and it yeah. all just comes together literally it's so like it's so funny it's like it, it's like my least favorite and favorite part because the end result of what you do and what you create is genuinely like you could have a frame up and i'm like no yeah that's like amazing and then you're like no and, and then, then you tweak it. it and, it and then i'm like better. oh i see it and that's helped me learn to be a better you know, director going forward whenever I want to do my own projects, like to have, learn what your eye is and how you find things and how you are tweaking things teaches me how to tweak things in my own. Autos, like it it had, I love autos because it has my own flair, but it has everything that's so detailed about you and your like skill. It's it's genuinely, it feels like a mesh of two personalities and I love it. It it really is. If you want to talk about Otis for a second, when we were shooting that, I legitimately was like, I think this is, I didn't think the movie was awful, but I was like the, the, the shots that I was getting and the lighting and everything, because it was so different from what I usually do. I was like, this has to be awful. It's not good at all. It's not working. And then like literally just yesterday, I was watching through it again um, and I was like, I think this is maybe like, so, this is definitely some of the best thing. This is like the, some of the most interesting things I have ever shot. Like, I love yeah. it. I love so, the you really, It's so cool. I love You pulled Kev out came, them. Yeah. Yeah. Kev was like, Zach, I'm going to do this really flamboyant camp. Color, 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 color. Uh, like, we're not being subtle here. And Zach was like, I'll do it. I've never done anything like it, but I'll do it. And yeah, you, I remember you having like crises on set. Oh, like, same. <laughs> like, oh no, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Color, what? What am I doing? And I was like, what do you mean, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> and so I'm glad that you like it now because I, I am. Think, yeah, I love it. It's I hard to get taken out of your, your comfort, especially because you had been doing your Such style of. Stuff. Well, yeah, like just like the more like dramatic, the subtleties, the the more natural lighting. And so to see you come out of your comfort zone was really interesting. And mm-hmm. I yeah. Something I think that it was a you big weren't lesson for us all. Doing yeah, it was a lesson because it wasn't something that I mean, you you were doing it because you had your your um capstone to do, but it was also something that like you didn't have to necessarily go and do all like help make this vision exactly what I was looking at and I think that's like just such an empowering thing to look at and be like you can do it and still make it your own and still make incredible pieces and I think that's what it what it showed is that there's oh such great I love it I love it you guys I can't wait for everybody to see this movie absolutely I had to absolutely I had to like everyone you got you guys have helped me out so much with everything like I will do anything anyone asks of me ever. Like that's just how it is. That's and just Kev, how what? I feel about Zach. Everybody, I want to We're do anything Zachary Cook asks. And Kev, what you said earlier about framing, like how the movie had like sort of like my style of framing, um, or like my unique eye, and how you wanted to like you learn kind of like what my eye was. Mm-hmm. The the thing about that is like I don't you you shouldn't like you can try and copy people because like there's stuff to learn. Like once you get the basic fundamentals down of like what should 
framing look like? Like how much headroom should mm -hmm. this have? Like, is this purposeful or not? Like rule of thirds, there's a few very, very basic sort of fundamental rules that most people typically follow. And once you get yeah. those down, everything else is your own personal style. And I right. feel like the most I ever try to like help with or that you guys can learn from me is what those fun like past what those fundamentals are you can like what my style is but it's very interesting to see you guys develop your own personal style like mm -hmm. that is i am really looking forward to seeing that in the future because rebecca has been getting really into oh yeah sort of cinematography and camera work and i'm really excited to see what she does in the future like yes, I, really, I, I agree I, with that, i am Zach. too jack <laughs> <laughs> I'm like building up my lights and everything because I just like well that's the thing is I, I remember when I when I started working with you all on Lots of Self I was in a I was not loving my college experience I was mm. not having a great time um COVID hit and I really plummeted um and then I got on I hadn't been excited about something in a long time and then we did the sizzle reel and I was like hmm, I got a little taste of it and I was like, hmm, I like this. And then I auditioned for Lost of Self. And then I got Lost of Self. And like literally, like you can ask um Eva, who if you don't know who Eva is, Eva was my roommate, uh, is still one of my best friends on this planet. Eva's incredible. And Eva I also is Eva. costuming for for Blue Hour. Um mm -hmm. but um like she like looked at me and was like, I think you found, I think you found your thing. And oh, like, you did without I a literally doubt. like, I like <laughs> changed like personality wise. Like I was just starting to feel more and more comfortable with myself. And, and so like, and people ask me, like, I actually just had a, a friend from high school reach out and talk to me about like what I'm doing since I've graduated. And like, they were like, how is that financially for you? Like, are you able to support yourself and stuff like that? And I was like, well, the good thing about this is that a I have support family b I love what I'm doing every day um which means no matter how much money I have like I will at least have joy which is key and three even though it takes a long time to get into this industry and like really start making a living it's worth it in the end and I figure we're young this is the time to do it like mm -hmm we're starting now which is which is giant like i think about pedro pascal who didn't get a huge role until he was in his 30s like it happens and if you just if you love what you're doing and if you put in the work in it pays off and like genuinely doing the films with you all like changed my trajectory mm. in life and I'm just very grateful for that. And I love that I'm still learning things and, you know, trying new things and buying expensive cameras. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of like post-college, let's talk about that for a second because we all are post-college now. We graduated and together. What's yeah. crazy for me is, is like, okay, I am now in a completely different state than all y'all. It's insane. Yeah, we're in three different and states again. Three different states again. And um, what's crazy, though, is you guys have had been filming. You guys still have been filming this past semester for Reading. And I haven't been there. Mm -hmm. And that's been like a dip in my own productivity and my own, you know, attachment to film. And it's been like scary because I'm like, am I losing it? Is it gone? And I feel like, no, this is like, okay. And that like we we will like find that connection again and I will find that flow again. But yeah. um, it's just been weird y'all like after college. It's, it's been... weird for us too. I feel yeah. like every time we go on a set, we're like, it's weird not having Kev here. I like, miss you guys. We miss you. I, I don't know how it's going to be when we shoot Reading in a few weeks and Kev is not going to be there like producing. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna we're, be weird. We're jumping in. Well, it's also I've, like we went from a crew of like 20 people in January and now we're on skeleton crew life. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Skeleton. And it's like literally skeletons. It's still <laughs> the same big stuff y'all were doing for those two weeks. 
It's so yeah. big. It's it's not it it never ends. It's not like there's a small scene versus a big scene. Like, yes, that's the case, but every scene, I was just watching Bridgerton on this my big wall with my projector. Your projector. Um, I love Bridgerton and I love my projector. Um, <laughs> but like I was just thinking about some shots that I had missed from the last time I had watched this. And even when I went to see the Titanic movie in theaters, like shots that I forgot existed. I'm just like, that shot was at least 30 to an hour and a half of time. At least, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Some of them are maybe a little bit quicker, but you know what I mean? I was just like, this is insane. Like the time that goes into art. And I love it. I love watching pieces and and seeing that and appreciating it. Cause I, I know I've been there anyways. That's just such a side note, but I thought it was cool. And I know yeah. it takes I also think we're experiencing something that's similar in the film industry though. Like, these are these are basically what I'd call like our pickups and our reshoots mm-hmm. um, because they are. And this is what happens when you're working on major film sets like their crews yeah. downsized when when they're doing these, you know, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like we're like a B crew. Um, but it like, happened on the Northman. It, there it happened see? on yeah. The How other project we we worked on together, there was a B crew that was the exact same crew, but just smaller. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's how that's how it goes. So I feel like we're learning something valuable, even though it's sad that we don't have everyone with us. Yeah, we're also learning. And, I mean, we're used to not having a ton of people on set. Yeah, and like what you also said, this is very a very much a similar experience. At least the separation of everybody i think about people like honestly now ellen pompeo she's leaving after 19 years on Grey's anatomy chandra oh after chapter 10 and it's like whatever the piece is whatever the project is it's still they're leaving that work they're leaving that environment and like we said it takes hours and hours and hours to create one shot so it's like um they're leaving that and that kind of is a separation and it feels like I'm I'm really I was like oh I have to leave that until I find that flow again and come back to a mm-hmm. different flow and it's and it, same thing happens in theater we we leave these eras and it's just weird I yeah. felt like I got rid of that and I didn't mm-hmm. want to feel that feeling again yet here I am feeling that feeling again anyway so it's a bunch deep. of temporary <laughs> film is just a bunch of temporary families and like if you're lucky yeah if you're lucky you get to stay in contact with them and keep working with them but like Mm -hmm. you know even us who like we're we're friends first and then we work together um like it we had to separate because of life circumstances like and and we talk all the time but like it's it's weird to not have your family by your side when you're Mm -hmm. doing things it's so, so weird. I I miss you guys, and I can't wait for the next project we do together. We are. I've been talking about like another little small little thing. No, we are small. Yeah, small, 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 small thing, but because I also <laughs> I love the idea of the creating content and the just the family of Blue Hour, and I just love the yeah. like creating the worlds of all these different stories and the Easter eggs. There are Easter eggs in all of our films. Find them. We love Easter eggs. I was born on Easter, fun fact. Oh. Yeah. Wait. April 15th, 2001, baby. I text. <laughs> no. Wait. Was what? Does Easter change? Every year, basically. Yes. Because it takes place on a Sunday. I was like, your birthday just happened and Easter was and it was an Easter. Ago. It's yeah, never been on like, my I'm yeah. really confused right now. It's never been like, on my birthday again during my lifetime. Sometimes oh. my birthday is on Thanksgiving, but it, it takes a while to get there. My sister yeah. had her birthday on Thanksgiving once in her life. Yep, that's usually how it goes. Um, so to wrap this up, because we are we are running quite long. Yes. Um Zach, we'll have to do I a Zach want... part two episode, by the way. Wait, we'll, that just we'll feels bring like... Zach back on. Don't worry. Ha- yeah. Thank uh, you. Had to just mention but, that. Yeah, we have to. Uh, but if we could all share our favorite piece of advice that we've ever received from uh, just a person on a film set, a mentor, if it was a mentor, um, 
Was that a loaded question to end this off with? No, I think it's a good one. <laughs> okay. It's a good question. I just, to end I just it have off to think with. about it. I yeah, same. I'm just like she. I can start. I'll start while you all think. Okay. <laughs> my okay. my favorite piece, and this is more general. I can't remember like verbatim what I was told, but uh, but basically, I've been told this by many many people on film sets especially indie film sets just jump in and try new things like I think that is the best piece of advice I've ever learned and there's there's a reason that I've done so many different things um and uh just just do it if you if it seems interesting just a little bit try it um and help out like if somebody needs help I don't care where what you're doing on this indie film set (laughs) if somebody needs help you do your best to help them. And if it's more helpful to back away and let them do their thing, back away. <laughs> I found what I was going to say. You found what you were going to say. In the words of Rebecca Murphy, hear about it. I know right now there's a lot of making and not a lot of seeing the results. Until you see the outcome, it's really difficult to know why you're doing the things. But I promise you, it's worth it. Oh, I do think that's, that's the best true. advice that I've ever heard, and it's from you. So, you XOXO. What about you, Zach? That was so sweet. I know <laughs> we just kind of had a moment. I almost forgot about you, Zach. I just like, <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> um, mm, I think that real. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think that the best piece of advice that. I don't think anyone's ever said this. I think this is just a really general piece of advice that every filmmaker ever says to everyone, but it is true. We even already said it, but it's just like, you have to make something. Like you learn Mm. by doing, especially in film, there's no experience more valuable than just going out and making the film, find a film to work on, make your own, do do whatever. Just like- you, you have to be making film. That's how you learn. It doesn't matter if it's like the best thing in the world. It doesn't have to be because- It's fun. It has to be fun. That's like the only requirement. If you're just doing it to do it, it has to be fun. Yeah. You have yep. to care about what you're doing, but no, I, this, that's a good one. Cause I think no, I, yeah. the paralysis of, of starting gets to many people. Every time I'm working on something, I'm like, this is, I think this is the best thing I've ever done. This is the best thing I've ever done. This is the best thing. Oh, I've yeah. Ever done. There's so many, and then, there's so much room for growth too when you do it. You're like, oh, this is amazing. And the next one's just more amazing. Yeah. And you it's learn. like, this, the second it's over, it's like, this could have been a lot better. You know, like, I, I could do and better. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then you go on to yeah. the next big project. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us, Zachary. I love you all. It was a pleasure to be here. We will have Zachary Cook returning. Who knows you when, know. who knows where, who knows how, but yeah. it's going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining us on the Off Hours Pod with Beck and oh. Kev, and we will talk to you next time. Yay! Thank you. Bye! <laughs>